today we are once again in a different spot than my normal studio. This is because taking classes inside my own bedroom has become physically and mentally straining on myself. Let me play a sad song for you on the world's smallest violin. And so I have created my, I don't know, studio part two, studio part one and a half, something like that. Anyway, basically I just condensed everything over to one desk and what I wanted to do today is show you a wonderful new little bit of equipment that I got. My cousin was going through some of his music stuff. He happened to find this Digitech RP80 pedal and unfortunately there were no instructions but it does work and so I'm gonna pull up the manual today and let's see if we can find out how to get some of these modeling effects going on. There's plenty of things to take a look at so I'll go ahead and bring you in close and let's learn about this together shall we? So, getting started, let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is a pedal that lets you switch between different presets that it's already got programmed in. Uh, it has a number of different kinds of effects over here, as well as a uh, movable pedal. Now, this is the part that I'm actually curious of getting active over here, but, uh, you know, currently right now I don't have any of the presets on here. I've gone ahead and gone through a bunch of them. Now, let me go ahead and just hit both of these pedals at the same time to give me a bypass, and let's go ahead and hear what this sounds like. No guarantee, unfortunately, about what this is actually going to sound like because my playing and my, you know, sound quality my guitar and everything like that, I, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> you see what I mean? I can't, I can't guarantee nothing on here. Let's take off the bypass and let's go ahead and just go over a couple of these presets over here. I really like that sound, it's nice and crisp. Some of these are interesting, like this one right here. I guess it's uh, using the pitch modulation on here and uh, some extra distortion or something like that. Some Ottawa effects going on. One of my favorite ones over here. So now real quick, let me go left to right and show you all of the different effects that they at least show on here. So I have level, pickup, wah, compressor, Amp model, noise gate, chorus, modulator, EQ, delay, reverb, expression, pattern, tempo, and level. Now, I also have this store button, which I imagine is what I'm going to use to save my presets. I have edit and effect, which lets me navigate through my menu over here. You'll see that LED going over towards the right. Then I also have my value and master volume over here. And then I also have a nice little drum pattern. So it also looks like this one gives me a bypass if I press both of them, but if I also hold both of them, it should give me access to the tuner. So now, 
And you can see that LED indicator is actually helping me get to all of my different pitches that I need. What's your guys' favorite tuning? Mine on my guitar right now is uh, standard in D tuning. Another one that I like is kind of a modal tuning, but it's, it's standard, but imagine turning your E strings down to D. So looking at these value and master buttons, it looks like these are actually used to be able to adjust the certain effects, um, changing the pattern, the tempo, and the level of the drum machine when it's turned on. Uh, this one actually also helps when you're on the tuning screen. These two will actually help you adjust your tuning preference as well. I imagine that that means like the kilohertz, like the 440 for A. Uh, it looks like that might be where you can adjust it for that. So I'm just gonna test periodically through here to see if we can figure this part out. I wanna figure out this wah right here. It seems like it's letting me change the pickup effect, but it's not letting me change the wah yet. And I'm gonna have to figure that part out. I think it's interesting that this expression and the mod button turn on at the same time. So it turns out that this one is my expression pedal. So while I can use it probably for a while whenever I get that one programmed, this one is actually able to edit any of the effects that come through this expression section right here. So if I have this one set to my chorus, for example, Nothing yet, we'll figure that part out. All right, let's try this out. So if I move my pattern, I can, of course, adjust my tempo here. My level to be able to change the volume of it while it's going through, and then of course my pattern to change. Sorry, we've got a fan running if it adds some extra weird sound to the recording. Your presets 1 through 40 are your user presets. Those are the ones that you can change. The ones that are between 40 and 80 are the ones that are factory presets that you can't change. But it looks like you might be able to copy some of those. So it's a possibility you might still be able to use some of the presets that are built into it and use them for your own purposes. Now there is a graphic inside the manual over here that looks like it's referring to the routing system. So it seems like all of the effects actually climb up in order of which the effect appears in its row. So like your delay is not going to happen after your reverb, it's only going to happen before. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look first at my wah effect over here, because that's the one that I'm actually aiming for. So off is just uh, turning this particular preset off. We have a single coil pickup, we have a humbucker style, we have a cry wash. But I'm not necessarily hearing any joint changes over here. That's what's weirding me out. This one's supposed to be a boutique wah, and this one should be a full range wah. So I actually wonder if there might be something wrong with this pedal over here because I'm not able to get any of that expression out of it. You would expect it to go wow, 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 wow right now, but it's not. It's just playing straight. Going at some of our other settings over here, we have our amp model, which actually changes the... kind of the cabinet sound. So this is blackface. This is Boutique. We have Rectifier. Really slamming solos right there. 
we have a hot rod. Got tweed. We have a British combo. We have a clean two amp. We have a British stack. A nice crunchy tube combo. We have a high gain tube amp. We have a vintage fuzz distortion. And then we have acoustic. Now, of course, I do have a couple of other effects that are going on over here that are changing a little bit of that sound profile, but in any case, we'll just go ahead and keep moving on. So this is a little interesting for this EQ. So it actually looks like these values are my bass. These are gonna be my mid-range. These are gonna be my treble tones. And then off, of course, is no equalization. And it also looks like this one, it goes five is no change on the frequency range. So this is bringing my bass down. This is bringing my bass up. But five is right in the middle, no boost or no cut. This is one feature that I actually really like on here. It's this noise gate. This helps out with, uh, especially when you have a really heavy distortion, you don't get that ringing. You'll actually hear it right now if you you listen there's that little bit of a hum so if I start turning up my value you'll notice the sound dips and then there's no hum afterwards let's go ahead and try to find another preset that works on this so that sounds really nice and then the sound stops the distortion stops but if we select our noise gate and turn that sucker off. Now you hear that humming going on in the background, even if I'm not playing anything. So even just having it on one. Now it is humming a little bit still. Usually these are based on a threshold. So when something gets quieter than a certain point, then the sound just cuts off. So at least that way it helps it cleaner, especially if I'm doing a solo or if I'm... Perfect. So our chorus and mod module on here is actually a lot more than just a chorus. So this one is actually a chorus, a flanger, a phaser, a tremolo, a panner, vibrato, A rotary speaker, an effect they call the ya ya. It looks like this one is probably going to be modulated by this expression pedal, but once again, we're going to have to take a look at that. We have an auto ya. This is our envelope effect. This is a detune. This one is the pitch effects, so I'm only going to play this one string. And then we have whammy effects. I'm going to skip on the delay over here and just go right into my reverb. So uh, these are going to be my room reverbs. These are my hall reverbs. I have plate reverbs, my church reverb, my arena, and then lastly my springs.
Okay, so what we have to decide next is, does the expression pedal actually work on this? So, unfortunately, I've never done anything like this um, successfully. I do have a, uh, a Boss Distortion pedal, one of the orange ones, and I need to actually replace the, uh, the pedal switch on it because it's broken, but... Like I said, I haven't been successful on it yet. Once upon a time, when I was about 12, I took a small, like a craft uh, electronics class. We made a hat. My hat had Christmas lights on it and a fan to keep it cool during the summer. Which is kind of interesting because it's it's like threaded, even though it's held in by that by this nut on the other side. It actually still also threads. Kind of difficult to get out. Oops. <laughs> Dead noises. So you can see inside there. I can't tell if that's just a, maybe a magnetic receiver or something. And it looks like there should be something right there, but maybe it came off. Maybe it's not supposed to be, maybe it's just, but that's right on top of that. So I feel like there has to be some kind of connection between this and that. Maybe it's a magnet that fell out. Maybe we can find it. While we're looking at the back over here, this one can be battery powered. You just fit in six double A's uh, inside over here. I do not have double A's with me, I just have it plugged into an adapter, but, you know, if you're ever playing in a live show or anything like that, definitely a useful thing to keep in mind. Now, I have to figure out how to carefully remove this. Tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Just because it was free does not mean that I want to break this. Maybe it'll be okay, though. If I take off the top, maybe it'll just come off with it. Luckily, I can just put these in that pedal for right now. All right, moment of truth. Let's see. I'm going to try to open the battery door and use this as my handle. And look at that. Woo! Snap. <laughs> okay, I just have a couple extra screws holding this in place. Something is real tight in there. That's what she said. I wonder if I'll even be able to get it out because of all the connectors. There we go. Whoop, there it goes. You're out! Time to do it, I guess. Crap. Pretty cool. Now, by no means am I very good at technical stuff like this, but what I'm trying to see is if it looks like there's been any damage or any disconnected wires, and unfortunately I can't see any. At least nothing that I can see that jumps out to me as in something is not going to work. Especially with this cable. Looks like everything is fine. It's connected in there well on both ends. I don't see anything disconnected or covered up or anything. Unfortunately, I don't see what the issue could be for right now. So let's go ahead and try to reassemble this and see if we can figure something else out. So there's one more thing that we can try here. So. We're gonna try, not a factory reset, but I'm gonna try to maybe get this back up and running properly here. Press and hold the down foot switch while reconnecting the power. I'm gonna to try to recalibrate this pedal here. So that's up, I'm gonna hit it, and then we're gonna put it down, I'm gonna hit it again. Yep, 
So that error that popped up over here means that it's it's not reading it. Something is going on. So that's up. Press the up foot switch. Press the down foot switch. It's just not picking it up. Up, down. Let's do up and let's do down. Oh. Maybe that's what we were looking for. Let's go ahead and try it. Oh, we got it. Just needed some recalibration. What's up? Sick. Now I gotta put this back together because I messed that up, but at least we got that part working. Sounds pretty excellent to me. And so finally, what are my thoughts on the RP80? Since I got my first electric guitar and my first amp, I struggled to find something that helped me achieve the sounds that I wanted. This is, has a lot to do with the experience that I had or did not have at the time, but I feel like having a little bit extra equipment, something that gave me a little bit more versatility, was something that would have helped, you know, push me to uh, become better more quickly. With this, it's able to give me a lot of different options and a lot of different tones, and maybe some of them aren't the absolute top quality, but many of them are way above what I could get, even just if I was using it on Fruity Loops or on many digital workstations, because essentially what I would do is I would just plug my guitar straight into my interface and let the computer do all the heavy lifting. So sometimes my sound actually suffered from it. I think you could actually hear some of that even in some of my earlier videos that I've posted. So with this, this helps give me a little bit more broad sound on my guitar, and it also helps me experiment with different settings or do little fine tune changes. The other great thing about this is that everything is all in one package, so I don't need a delay pedal and a chorus pedal and a wah pedal and distortion pedals. Now I do have all of those pedals, but having all of them in one quick, easy option to be able to switch between those presets actually is really nice. It's not difficult to set up your different presets. It's really fun to play around with all the different sounds that it has to offer, and it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. It's a real simple design, nice and easy. Now, I was researching this online because I wanted to find out prices. Like I said, my cousin gave me this one, so I actually found out that this is probably a discontinued pedal at this point. Uh, Digitech no longer really offers this one, so you can't buy this new, at least as far as I can tell. Now, I have seen these online go between like 60 bucks to 100 bucks, not bad for one of these pedals used. I will say this one, you can tell it is very used, but it actually works really well, even considering that it is kind of beat up. You know, of course, there was a little bit of the learning curve when it came to this pedal, but I'm actually really happy that I ran into that problem so that I can share that with you as well to get that fixed. You know, if you're a guitar player that doesn't have a whole lot of extra equipment like effects pedals and you want something that'll be able to help branch those out, I would recommend trying to look for one of these guys because uh, especially since they are used, you might be able to find one that's not as expensive as some of the newer models. I am actually really interested in checking out some of the newer models too to see what other kinds of improvements that they might have made on them. But for right now, I'm totally happy with this and I know that I'm going to be able to write a whole bunch of new songs with this as well. So, you know, of course, keep an eye out for this one in my videos coming up too. Now, it looks like we're just about wrapped up over here, folks, so thank you very much for joining me. If you have any questions or want any other further instructions or anything like that on this guy, please feel free to drop them in the comments. And until our next video, I hope that you have a great one. See you later.